we are to win. And go. Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I just got so excited. I, I know just, you did. I knew put... as soon as I put it up here, he was gonna be excited. <laughs> this is from a patron saint. It's whiskey in a box. It's patron saint Brian Dickerson. Oh, I'm gonna use this one. Brian Dickerson, you, you patron saint of whiskey. <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Okay, this is black box whiskey from the people they do who wine. made the famous black box wines. No, they've gotten into the spirit industry. Let me, let me, let me tell you something. Tequila, to, vodka, and whiskey. Uh, I, I, back in the day, maybe like three, four years ago, I went on a little mini quest to try and find some very delicious and tasty box o wine. Now, Black Box was among those that I sampled. And uh, what's his name? Devin. We did a Whiskey Tribe episode with him. A whiskey hater tries some blah, 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 blah. Devin had swore he had found some amazing box wine. Oh, no, it was Jacob. It was Jacob Harrison. Box wine Harrison. Okay, so Devin was yeah. Jacob. Box wine. So I'm going, I'm going on this journey. And I go through like a dozen boxed wines, different categories and blah, blah, blah. And I finally found one. And I was like, oh, it exists. Boxed wine can, in fact, be good. And I emptied it out, went back and bought another. Worst thing I ever tasted in my life. Ah, what happened? What's the difference? I don't know. I don't know if it's, if it's like, a, like, like a vintage thing. They're just sourcing, doing batch to batch. Sourcing yeah. from weird places. You know what that reminds me of is in Trader Joe's, we had Two Buck Chuck for a long time. Right. And it was Charles, uh, uh, yeah. whatever, Shaw Vineyards or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And the first round was like really good well, $10, $12 specifically, bottle. Specifically, if I remember correctly, they acquired this wine because the vineyard went out of business. Yes. But they were making really good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So they bought a bankrupted vineyards product, basically. And they just two buck chucked it. Blasted and then it, out. it went huge. And so they had to fin figure out how to keep selling two buck chuck. Right. There's a certain point at which it started tasting like two, two buck, buck chuck. chuck yeah. right. uh, this one is Canadian. Oh, okay. Yeah, it says you, you, they, they know it's Canadian. product of Canada <laughs> Why on the side. Well, here's what's funny. I researched it. <laughs> yeah. Everyone who's talked about this, right. not everyone, a lot of people talk about it like, I don't know where it's from or what's in it. No, so it's like, well, it says product of Canada. <laughs> you got to read the box. And... All right. Now, hold on. We can't bust balls for people missing details. What are you talking about? Yeah, we... we have never missed a step <laughs> in four years. Uh -huh. Wait, let me go ahead and get some whiskey for you see, there. Now, this is what I was really excited about. With Wait, the can wine. you guys see that? Like, with the wine. Like the convenience of that. <laughs> Just right? walk around it. I feel like I'm... I uh, mean, I, I could be, you know, in, on my couch, put this on the coffee table. The only thing I have to do is lean forward and push the button and lean back. <laughs> I don't <know. laughs> even have it. to uncork it or anything. <laughs> oh, this is funny. Right. <laughs> okay, here we go. Yeah, it smells, smells like Canadian. a Canadian whiskey. It really does. It's got the same vanilla, shiny, metallic icing note. Yeah, but Canadian whiskey, as we've seen um, in, uh, in like the sales numbers, wildly popular. Oh, yeah. It's some of the most highly sold whiskey in the States, for sure. There's a, another note in here. It's very ethanol-y. Like, it smells like alcohol. You know what? Like, though? it smells like if you got a whiskey-flavored nail polish. Man. But if they're aiming for the mass. Oh, yeah. It, they're hitting it right over home plate. This is you mass. put this in Coke? Yeah. No, this would be next to the whiskey Coke station yep. at a party. It really would. Yeah, you've got a Coke, you've got a Coke right. and a box one, and you just So basically budget Canadian and whatever things you would do with a budget Canadian. Not mm -hmm. necessarily for neat pours um, on the rocks with uh, with with a soda in there. Um, I think it probably flies right over home plate oh. for that purpose. Now, in terms of the nerd curve, it's very, um, it's uh, ethanol-y is a word. It's that, you know, vanilla, simple, simple presentation, sweet. It's got to be 40%, just confirm. Dude. Is it a 40%? Did you taste this yet? I did. Oh. It's a 40%. It's so vanilla. See, just tell me. I need to know for yes, sure. Yes, it is. Okay, all right. It's so... Sa saccharin vanilla. Mm -hmm. uh, it reminds me of one time when we did uh, in high school, just for fun, we did like little mini shots right. of like the flavorings that go in coffee. Right. 
And it just tastes so flavored, metallic, and fake flavored It's like action. Um, putting some Splenda in. Uh, Something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, if you're mixing it, <laughs> there's going to be people that try this that aren't whiskey nerds. Yeah. They just buy, oh, it's convenient. You got the spout. Cool. And they're going to buy it again, man. It's, I, it was um, Crown Royals on the list. Then you got Canadian Mist on that, you know, popularity by sales Oh, list. the Crown Royal is better. You got, um, was it Black Velvet's another one? Yeah. Black, Black Velvet. Velvet. There were a, an inordinate number of Canadian whiskeys. Collingwood. The most popular whiskeys. Uh, by sales in the States. And this would hold its own against those Canadian offerings if you're going for sweet, simple, low-proof uh, flavors. Look, if you took Crown Royal and added a dash of vanilla extract, right. then you've got the black box whiskey. You know what? Because whenever we get a whiskey like this, because I know it's not designed to be experienced this way. Mm -hmm. I always feel a little silly doing a neat pour. So yeah, this, this is never gonna be a neat pour. It's gonna be on the rocks, maybe, most likely gonna be in a soda. Nah. The thing that's weirdest about this is gonna be the finish. Yeah. It's kind of aspartame -y. It is very is it much. Aspartame or it aspartame? Is a, I think it's in. In aspartame? I think, I don't actually know. Yeah. I don't know. Eh. Anyways. Uh, it's on the box. <laughs> <laughs> <As for two. laughs> uh, we got Johnny Shipman. Anyone else have a negative reaction to the musty finish of a sherry cask finish whiskey? Yes. I just can't seem to get past it. Any tips or recommendations? Yes, I struggled with sherry cask for a long time because I really didn't like what turned out to be the sherry cask funk mm. at the end. Uh, I got over it by drinking sherry. So when I was starting to study scotch, I went out and specifically bought all the different kinds of sherry that you can buy right. so that I could try to understand what's the difference between a Fino and uh, Oloroso cask and Pedro Menez right. and right, what are the differences? And as I started to understand the various flavors that are coming from the sherry, when I went back to the whiskey, I found shockingly this like, oh, I really, I'm starting to like this mm. a lot. Hmm. And now I really love it. So uh, it's up there with the smoke impact for me. So it took you like going to the source mm -hmm. and firming up that reference point. Yes. So whenever you got back, you weren't weirded out by the the, the sherry right. influence. You I was understanding able to pick what it, it was contributing. Okay. Yeah. And at that point, I got to where I could pick out, if you poured me a sherry cask whiskey, I could tell you whether it was Pedro Menez or Oloroso. Hmm. The more I go back to this, mm -hmm. I get acclimated to that that simple sweet vanilla note, which mm -hmm. is, you know, it's a perfectly fine note. I get acclimated to that, and what I'm left with, I really don't care for. Yeah. I don't like it. No, I got that in that first sip. It's 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 the vanilla little the little classic Canadian vanilla vanilla is largely gone and I get it's this. It's like kind a soda of... burp. <laughs> okay. All right. You get the that sort of like uh, like vomity note from a burp, uh, the carbonation burp. I don't get that. No, see, I had acid reflux for 20 years, and so my burps were not fun. It's yeah. gross. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Look, I'm not worried about what whiskey box, black box people be up, being upset by our review. It gets... <laughs> They're going to be just fine. It gets more... Oh, yeah. No, this, this <laughs> people that watch this show probably aren't the market they're targeting for this, which is fine. Um, ben Eller, if this coronavirus is still around for the second dry week, can I make a motion to skip it until this is over with? Can I get a second and take this to a vote? No. You get to vote nothing. This is, what's the thing, a monarchy. Yeah. And I'm in charge. That's right. And he's my court jester. Wait, what? And you're bad at your job. No. <laughs> not, I was called the court jester, but, but that brings me to a thing that we need to do. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. We should Which have is done that it. this should Friday. We should have done it the last episode. Well, this here. is the Monday episode oh. leading up to the Friday. So. so we're not behind. We're not behind. The dry week's coming up. Dry week's coming up this, this Friday, how May dare you? How dare you impose a dry week, a quarterly challenge. That's right. In the midst of a <laughs> pandemic, Daniel. I know. How could you? How could you? Friday, May 8th, uh, going to Friday, May 15th, noon to noon. Oh, so you're not answering the question. Uh, I this don't is how we could. It. 
Because magnificent bastards don't do things only when they're easy. Oh, okay. And in the midst of being stuck at home, uh, I think there's a lot of people that are probably going to be reaching for that bottle way more often uh, than they no typically question. would. So I think it's good for us to do what the quarterly challenge is always meant to do. Have an intentional window of time where we check in and make sure that the alcohol consumption in our lives isn't becoming so habitual, so routine, that it puts us on a slippery slope that could be problematic for you in the future there. So we hope you join us. It's optional, of course. It's always optional. And what were the dates on that again? Uh, May, noon May 8th to noon May 15th. Okay. Now, uh, yeah, I had a friend, Dave Young, who posted to his Facebook status. Yeah. Hey, uh, been, uh, been getting out and getting in a, a three to four mile run daily. Yeah. Uh, eliminated sugar and alcohol mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. Lost 14 pounds in the last two weeks so far. Wow. Uh, I don't know who this is from, but I just saw it and thought it was a really cool status update, cut and paste. <laughs> <laughs> I want to support them and they're trying hard. Yeah. So uh, most of the people I know have been saying things like, holy crap, I'm going through my whiskey faster than I ever have before. Yeah. Part of it is they're not going out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're not going out for drinks since you're drinking your own stash. But uh, I think it's a good thing to do the dry week again. Fair enough. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I'll fight for a friend. You steal me, you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. Blech.